Good to see you in God's house tonight. Uh, thanks to all who came out on Monday night for prayer. I tell you what, it makes a difference. We had a good number here Monday night, and I appreciate everybody coming out. And you know, we need to pray more and more and more. It's, especially we see the, the time of the Lord's coming back. So we're going to pray that the souls will be saved. Praise God. Let us stand open up the service in prayer tonight. Precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you, Lord God, for this opportunity. We can come into your house tonight, Lord God, lifting up holy hands, Lord God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for every blessing. I thank you for the prayer service on Monday night, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, only time and eternity will tell what was accomplished, Lord. Lord, I ask tonight, Lord God, you just reach down in a mighty way, touch, Lord God, touch the sick and afflicted, Lord God, touch, Lord God, each and every one. Lord, I ask God, touch our pastor tonight, just anoint him in a mighty way, Lord God, as he brings the word. Lord, I ask God, touch the song service, Lord, the singing, Lord God. Lord, just touch, Lord, the altar, the altar service, Lord God, touch the offering, Lord God. Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory for everything that's accomplished, Lord. Just have your way tonight. We'll be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory for all things accomplished. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we do pray and ask these things. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go out your spirit in a mighty way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship as Sister Amy comes and leads us in a congregational. was alone and idle. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took my master's hand and I joined that heavenly band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my him that I, I would serve him till I died. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I lost my 
flag in battle. My staff is in my hand. I'm taking it to Jesus over in the glory land. In distant land I trod, crying, Sinner, come to God. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm fighting for my Savior. The battle is most won. The trumpet will be sounding the coming of the sun. I'll lay my armor down. Take up my robe and crown, then I'll walk the golden streets with my Lord. Amen. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I died. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I died. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I died. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've got to stay on that battlefield. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship as uh, Brother Eddie comes and leads us in uh, prior tonight. Praise God. I missed him on Sunday night. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember yesterday, Brother Charlie. <laughs> um, let's uh, remember Brother and Sister Ball, uh, Sister Sandra, Sister Sarah, Sister Angela, Sister Betty, <clears throat> Brother Sam, Brother Dean, uh, James Green, Rebecca Harris, Peggy Massey, Joanna Sanders, Peggy Fogelman, uh, Tammy Bachelor, Tom Otwell, Julia Gillespie, Cheryl York, uh, Christine Croft, Billy Duckworth, Olivia Baker, uh, Brother Bowling, Brother Shortridge, Lenore Manis, Stephen Gardner, Linda Sayer, uh, Francis Freeman, Phil Dixon, David uh, Stickler, and his girlfriend, Sylvia. And Brother Oliver turned in a request for his niece, Brandy Vonner. She has cancer. Uh, all these need a healing in their body. Um, let's remember to pray for Sam Lamb and Lawson Ferguson. They need healing and salvation. Uh, remember to pay for uh, Kevin Stillman, Sister Sarah's children, Amy Simpson, Michaela Reese, Rick Adams, and Arnold Spencer. Uh, they all need salvation. Uh, let's pray for God to move in Aaron's situation and also Nathan and Brianna and uh, Caitlin and uh, Sister uh, Susan's uh, situation. Uh, they need God to move in a, in a situation for them. And as always, let's remember the youth from our church, Haley, Harper, Aaron, Jalen, Selena, and Tyranny. Uh, does anybody else have a prayer request? Pray for Sister Angela. She's been in Texas for days, but she has first and second barrel cell fevers. Also, Sister Ball sent me a text that Brother Ball's really feeling bad. Uh, going to the doctor on Monday, so pray for him. And I got a call from a preacher friend of mine today that uh, Sister Juanita, over at Lights for Christ, Holiness Church, her daughter Darnell. If you've ever been over there, you've heard her ask prayer requests for, for Darnell. Um, she has cancer. They found cancer in her lungs, in the tissue in her lungs. Uh, it's, it's weak. They're going to do some more tests on her. So uh, he called and wanted our church to be praying for her, please. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's remember these requests. Is anybody else? Sister Pat? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Remember Sister Amy's job situation. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Anybody else? All right, let's remember this. Nothing else. Let's uh, stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you tonight. And thank you, God, for everything you do, God. Lord, we just ask the Lord to just uh, heal the sick, God. Save the lost, Lord. Lord, just fill with the Holy Ghost tonight, God. Every way this office service, God. Lord, we just ask you to touch Brother and Sister Paul tonight, God. Touch Brother Paul special, God. He needs the healing of his body, Lord. Lord, touch for his granddaughter, Caitlin, God. He's working her situation, Lord. Just heal her body, Lord. Just heal her from her blood disease, God. If you just touch her tonight, heal her knee, Lord. Lord, we just love and praise you. Give you all the honor and glory for it, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Ask you to touch Sister Angela tonight, Lord. Heal her body, God. Uh, uh, give her a quick recovery from this uh, procedure she had done, God. Lord, we ask you to touch your brother, uh, Sam T, God. Help him, Lord. Heal his body, God. Touch Sister Betty tonight, Lord. Complete healing in her body, God. I don't need a touch from you desperately, Lord. Oh, we just need you to heal the sick, God. Oh, we just save the lost, God. Oh, I just ask you to touch uh, Sister Darlene's daughter, God. I need to help work in her situation, God. Lord, I pray for her. Save the Brianna situation. And Aaron, God. Oh, we just need you to move, move, work in those situations, God. Oh, we know you are able, God. God, and heal anybody that needs healing, Lord. God. We know you are the great physician, God. You are able, Lord. Lord, we just honor you and praise you and thank you for everything you do, God. Lord, I ask you this to save the lost, God, to save my children, God. Save Cody and Hannah and Jamie, God. Just touch them tonight, Lord. Lord, I just give you all the praise and honor and the glory for it, Lord. In Jesus' holy name I pray, Lord. Amen, amen. Working this service today, God. Lord, just anoint the preacher tonight, God. Lord, anoint the singers and the musicians, God. Lord, our ears to hear and our hearts to receive the Lord. Lord, we just love you and praise you and honor you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. In this name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. This will be the name. Praise the Lord. He's still answering prayers. Yes, Praise does. God. Hallelujah. Yes, it does. Let's continue to worship and give. And if we can get our ushers coming at this time, we'll save eating and offering. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> the Lord. Brother Albright, would you pray with us time of worship?
Amen. Praise God. May God richly bless you for your faithfulness and giving. We all need to do like little Andy Rose is doing over here. She was just a bouncing during that song. You know, happy. That's why we need to be happy in the Lord. Praise God. Announcements, uh, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, Brother Zach will be uh, preaching at uh, Terra Bella. Uh, ladies Ice Cream Social Saturday from 2 to 4. Uh, okay, then I'm going to speak on uh, worldliness. Worldliness equals a lost soul. That's what worldliness causes. If you're worldly, you'll end up being lost. But godliness equals eternal life. Mark 8, 36 and 37 says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Well, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And then First uh, Timothy chapter 4, the Apostle Paul warns young Timothy that some shall depart from the faith given his heed to seducing spirits and doctrine and devils. He tells them in verses uh, 7 through 9, But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profit the little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. So we not we got we got to be godly. Uh, worldliness uh, it's lo you'll be lost, but godliness you'll have eternal life. Let's continue to worship with Brother and Sister Albright coming to minister in song. While they're coming, yesterday was Brother Oliver's birthday. I told him we'll sing to him on Sunday, but y'all wish Brother Oliver a belated happy birthday. God, I don't feel at home in this world anymore. If we ever get where we feel like we're at home in this world, we need to check up because something's wrong. Because this world, it, it's going down. We can see the way things are happening. That you know, the the Lord's getting ready to come, and He said He'll never you know uh, destroy this world again by water. But next time it'll be by fire. It'll be purged by fire. So let's be ready to go to heaven. At this time, turn to service. I pass to Rush Elton. Bless you. Amen. Give God a hand of praise now. Love him. Worship him. 
Amen. If you feel at home in this world, it's because you're worldly. I said, if you feel at home in this world, it's because you're worldly. Amen. If you've got Jesus living in your heart, uh, your heart's over there. We're not there yet, but our hearts are already over there. Amen. We're looking for his appearing. We're looking for Jesus to come again. And uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be worldly. Do you? I want to live holy. I want to follow peace and live with peace with all men where possible. I want to live holy lives so we can see God. And I know, listen, I, I know if we don't do that, the Bible's clear, we won't see God. And I want to see Him. You get that heart pure. I, I told Sister Shelton yesterday, I said, you know, we, we, we're, we do it backwards sometimes in the Pentecostal church. We're guilty of seeking for God's power. But if we'll seek for His purity, the power will come. If we'll seek purity for righteousness and how we live our lives in every area of our life, if I seek God to be pure and to live a pure, righteous life, I told him tonight, Lord, it's not my righteousness, it's yours. My righteousness is filthy rags, but his righteousness is right. Amen? And if I'll seek him that way, we're going to see him one day. We'll have power with him, and we'll see him one day. Can you say praise the Lord? How I many know oh, we're so blessed? I want you to nod your heads in agreement. We are so blessed. God has been so good to every one of us. Maybe you felt better in your body last year than you do this year, but you're still blessed. Maybe you had more money uh, yesterday than you have today. The bills come and all that goes out. But we're blessed beyond measure. God has been so good to us. It, it baffles me. It, it, you know, it just caused me to scratch my head and wonder how in the world after God has been so good to people, how people can treat God the way that they do sometimes. I don't understand that. As good as God is to us, as everything God does, does for us, he, he didn't just send his son to die for us. I'm glad that he did. Without that, we're hopeless. We're lost. But then he saved us and he, he keeps us daily. He protects us daily. He watches over us daily. He meets our needs. He protects us from things that we don't even know he protected us from. Amen. We are so blessed. I want you one more time to give him a good, not because I've asked you to, just because you know it's true. God has been so good to us. God has been so good to us. and He's worthy. Every song that's been sang up here tonight, God was worthy of that. All the music played here tonight, God was worthy of that. Every amen, every hallelujah, every hand that's been raised, every hand that's been clapped, everything we've rendered to him, he's been worthy of and so much more. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? He's worthy of all of that and so much more because of his goodness. We don't understand sometimes. We're, we're so used to living in that goodness and experiencing that goodness daily. That we, you know, you get used to it. If we're not careful, it becomes common to us. The old saying is, you don't realize how much you appreciate your well, uh, your water till your well runs dry. <clears throat> we live in that goodness every day. That's why the Bible exhorts us to, to be thankful in everything. Always give Him thanks for everything. God's good to us in big ways. And God's good to us in just the very minute details of our lives. And uh, we ought to praise him and love him and be thankful to him for it. Amen. I don't want to wait till November the 24th. Is that when it is? That Thanksgiving sometime in, the, sometime in latter November. I don't want to wait till then when I got a big turkey sitting on my table and all the food and all that stuff. And then take time in prayer to thank the Lord for his blessings. I want to thank him every single day because every day he's worthy. Amen. Every day he's worthy. Praise God. Good to see you. In the house of God tonight, I do pray for those. we got several that called and said they're sick. Let's pray that God will help them. I'm glad Sister Darlene's doing better. We've been praying for her. Sister Judy still needs our prayers. And I want to pray for Brother Ball. He's been down for a little while now. And uh, he just needs a good divine touch in his body. And uh, she said he's going to the doctor, I think, on Monday. But the, the great physician can touch him before then. And uh, Sister Blanche needs a healing in her body. She just needs God to do something divine. My mother, I talked to her today, 
and uh, she just needs God to do something divine in her as well. There's several here tonight that's got infirmities of some kind, and, uh, but there's nothing, nothing beyond his power. Brother Sam needs a touch in his body. There's nothing God can't do. Can you say amen? If you have your Bibles tonight, let's stand. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5, just one verse tonight uh, as the Lord's helped us. One verse, verse 18 this evening. Amen. I appreciate Sister Pat and Brother Larry back there. And uh, these, these are wonderful people. I love them. And uh, they, just, they, just, they just are pieces of the puzzle. And uh, I appreciate them a whole lot. I love them. And I, I know they know that. But uh, we're glad they're here. All of you. I love every one of you. And uh, we're thankful for you. Every one of you is a piece of the puzzle that makes this body in this particular church complete. Amen. So we're thankful for each one of you. Glad for those that are watching online tonight. Thank you for being a part of this service with us this evening. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. The Apostle Paul said, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. If you don't take the first drink, you won't ever have to worry about being drunk. I had a man tell me one of the most foolish things I've ever, I'm going to say top five foolish things that I've had told to me. He said, well, there's no difference in drinking a beer and his drinking Kool-Aid. I think he'd been drinking some kind of crazy Kool-Aid. I said, that's top five stupidity. That's top five dumbest things I've ever heard to compare a, a, a can of beer with some Kool-Aid. And, uh, you know, people, but you know, that's, that's people do what they want to do. They come up with what they want to come up with because they want to do what they want to do. But when you get born again, you don't belong to yourself anymore. You want to do that whichever pleases him. Amen. And, uh, you know, but so if you don't ever take the first drop, first drink, you don't have to worry about ever being drunk. And every drunkard took that first drink. That's what got him started. So he said, don't be drunk with wine, we're in success, but be filled with the Spirit. Father, thank you tonight. It's a joy to be in your house, Lord. Always glad to be able to come to church and to stand on this sacred holy ground. Stand behind this blessed desk, Lord. I, I treasure this right here, God. Uh, this right here, Lord, is some of the most wonderful time of my life, God. Be able to stand behind this desk or anywhere to stand and be able to preach the gospel. I'm thankful for the calling, Lord. Now we've come to this time of the preaching of the word of God. I know to the world it's foolishness. I know to the world it's, it doesn't seem like there's any any advantage to it God but to us that are saved it's the power of God unto salvation thank you Lord that we heard the preaching somewhere in our life and we were we were convicted by the word of God through the spirit of God somehow we heard preaching we heard the word of God and faith took hold in that word and we were born again and washed by the blood of the lamb I'm thankful God for your word and I pray you'll help me preach it tonight I pray, God, hide me behind the cross now. I pray that the ears will be attentive. Help us to forget about everything else going on in our lives except for this word being preached tonight right here for this time, this moment now, God. Touch us around the altars tonight. Let every man, woman, boy, and girl be touched in these altars and be helped by you. Touch those watching online now, Lord. And again, we're so thankful and we're so grateful we're glad to be here. We're glad to be part of the kingdom of God. We're glad to be on our way to heaven. We want to give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lift up your hands and praise him and love him just for a moment tonight. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Make us hungry tonight, Lord. Oh, make us hungry tonight, God, for you, for your word, Lord. Make us hungry in this house tonight. And we praise you and bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shouted amen. amen. And you may be seated tonight. Starving man, you don't have to beg to eat. 
You just put the food out there and he'll eat. Amen. It'll be natural to him to eat. So if you're hungry for the word of God, we won't have to beg you for anything tonight. If you love him, we won't have to beg you to worship him. We won't have to beg you to come to these altars here in just a little while. A hungry man will always eat if you'll put food out there. And this word of God is food. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Amplified says of this particular verse, Ephesians 5 and 18, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity, but be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. But be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly got guided by Him. Charles Spurgeon said this, Without the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. We are as ships without wind, branches without sap, and like coals without fire, we are useless. I want to preach for a little while tonight on this thought, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. When the Apostle Paul wrote these scriptures there to the church at Ephesus, he said in verse 18, but be filled with the Spirit. I want you to notice here tonight that to be filled with the Spirit is not a suggestion. This is not optional for the believer. This is not something that we can just flip a coin to whether we want to be filled with the Spirit of God or not. But it is a command from the Lord. The Bible makes it clear that every Christian, every child of God, we're going to be judged based on our full obedience to the Word of God. James said, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you know to do good and you don't do it, it's sin. If you know something's right and you don't do that, it's sin. If you know something's wrong and you do it, it is sin. If we know to do something and, and hear again, this is not a mere suggestion from the Word of God. This is a command from God's Word. If we know to do something and we don't do it, it is sin in our lives. The Bible tells us that it is absolutely essential. It is necessary that we be filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit is not a command for one Christian or for an elite group of Christians. When he said here to be filled with the Spirit, this is not just for the church of God. This is not just for a particular de denomination. This is not just for a particular individual or a certain aged individual. Um, but it's for all Christians. Every person that's been washed by the blood, every person that's been saved and have their sins forgiven, uh, every one of us are commanded to be filled uh, till we're full of the Spirit of God. It is imperative for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It is imperative for me to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe the Bible's clear about this, just as sure as it's God's will that we all be saved. It is God's will that we all be full of the Holy Ghost and the fire. It's God's will that we all be full of the Spirit. Can you say amen tonight? I told Sister Albright before the service just a little while ago, I said, you know, uh, it seemed like these days, it's from Sunday to Wednesday, it seems longer than what it used to be. I know when we're younger, you know, that it, it didn't seem as long from one service to the next. And I said, the reason it's that way is because the days are, are more wicked now than what they were years ago. We're exposed to more wickedness in these days. We're out there in the darkness of this world, uh, and I just don't feel at home in this old world anymore, do you? So I look forward to every opportunity. I count down the days. Uh, today's Monday, Wednesday's coming. Today's Tuesday, Wednesday's coming. Uh, today's Wednesday, tonight's church night. Uh, do the same thing looking for Sunday to come. Uh, we're out there in the darkness of that world, the sin. We're exposed to it uh, every way that we turn. Uh, it's good to be able to come into God's house uh, and to be in all of this. Can you say amen? Well, that goes the same as true uh, for being filled with the Spirit. Uh, 
That's why it's necessary. That's why, uh, you know, it's essential that we all be full of the Holy Ghost. These are dark days. These are days that are hard to bear. To go to heaven, you've got to be washed by the blood. But I want to remind you to look down. We're not walking on streets of gold yet. We're not in heaven yet. We're still out there in that world. We're still surrounded what we're surrounded by. Now, I don't want to get up out of my bed and leave my house in the morning uh, without knowing that I'm full of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. I don't want to face what's in that world uh, unless I know that I'm full of the Spirit of the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? I want you to notice here that it is a continual command. The words be filled is the, in the ongoing tense. It could literally be translated this way. Uh, keep on being filled with the Spirit. In other words, what he's saying here is this. We don't get filled with the Spirit today and that's going to be enough to last us from here on out. What you got 25 years ago in an altar when you got baptized with the Holy Ghost, that was wonderful for 25 years ago. That was wonderful for that day. Uh, amen. But you had to get up and go out and face the world the next day. And the next day. And the next day. What you got 10 years ago, that's wonderful. Uh, but that was not enough to keep us. Uh, we've got to continually keep on being filled uh, with the Spirit over and over and over again. Amen. Uh, we need to be filled with the Spirit each and every day. That simply means that each day uh, I've got to take time uh, to draw up near to that well. Uh, I've got to be thirsty uh, and to drink from that well every single day. I've got to make sure that daily I, I'm making time to get along with God uh, and letting God just pour heaven into me all over again. We give out day by day. Uh, we empty out uh, as, as we're a light in the darkness of this world. So every day I've got to be determined uh, I'm going to be filled with the Spirit again today. Uh, we do that in the natural with, our, with food and drinks and water. Uh, every day we, we feed our bodies because of hunger. Uh, we, we drink water and we drink tea and other, other things uh, because these bodies long and they get thirsty and they long for something to drink. Uh, well, it's got to be the same in the spiritual. Uh, every day I got to be hungry to be filled again. Uh, every day I got to be thirsty for his righteousness again. Uh, and if I'll take the time to come to him every single day, uh, I assure you that God, uh, hey man, he'll pour into us. He'll refill us. Uh, hey man, that fountain does not run dry. Uh, that fountain does not get empty. Uh, that fountain is not affected by the times. Uh, hey man, it is bottomless. Uh, and if I'll plunge into it, uh, God will fill me over and over and over again. Can you say amen tonight? We must keep on being filled with the Spirit or we will run low. We will dry up and we'll end up twice dead plucked up by the roots. There's a reason why people used to be happy in their relationship with the Lord. And today they have the long mule faces. They're not happy any longer. There's a reason why people used to shout and rejoice. Uh, and today you don't even know they've got hands and arms attached to their body. Uh, they're, they're mute in their worship. Uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, that oil gets low. That spirit gets low. Uh, and if we don't get recharged and refilled every day, uh, we'll eventually dry up. We'll be crisp. Uh, we'll not be of any use for anything for God. Uh, that's why the Bible said keep on being filled. Uh, keep on going to that altar. Uh, keep on crying out to God. Uh, keep on asking the Lord to do it again today, Lord. Uh, do it again in my life today, Lord. Uh, if your joy is low, uh, let me tell you how to get it refilled. Uh, just come back to the altar. Uh, ask the Lord to refill you good. Uh, and when he refills you with the Spirit, uh, he'll elevate you into the presence of God. Uh, and in his presence is the fullness uh, of joy. Can you give him a hand of praise in this house tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. This is one of our greatest protections that we have against sin. This is one of our greatest protections against worldliness, against backsliding, against drifting, against lukewarmness and carnality, and that is to stay full of the Spirit. Nobody full of the Spirit has ever backslid. 
I said, nobody that kept that, 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 that spirit man full and full of the fire of God and the Holy Ghost, uh, they've never gone back on the Lord. It's when we let that thing empty out. It's when we let it get low. We'll begin to drift away from God. Uh, amen. Then the things of this world uh, will become appealing to us again. As long as I'm full of him, uh, there's nothing in that world in me. But if I let myself get low, I, I'm telling you, friend, I'm not going to run on empty. Something's going to fill this vessel. If we don't stay full of him, we'll be full of that world out there. So let me say it to you again tonight. Keep on being filled with the Spirit. Keep on coming to the Lord of glory with a hunger and with a thirst. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Can you give him praise tonight? Hallelujah to God. Being filled with the Spirit produces a transformation in the heart and the life of Christians. There's going to be visible evidence of this transformation in the life of every child of God. Every Spirit-filled child of God, there's going to be evidence that you're full of Him. Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 20, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Somebody said, don't judge me. You don't have to judge anybody. Amen. Just be patient. That tree's going to bear fruit. That life's going to show you what it really is. He said in Matthew 12 and 33, for the tree is known by his fruit. This is what Jesus is telling us here. He's telling us we're going to be able to identify true Christians by the evidence of their lifestyle. There's going to be evidence that a Christian is filled and being filled with the Holy Spirit. There's going to be evidence of that in church on Sunday. But there's also going to be evidence of that on the job on Monday. There's going to be evidence at Walmart. There's going to be evidence at family gatherings. There's going to be evidence at the doctor's office. There's going to be evidence at the ball game. There's going to be evidence when we're on vacation around people we don't know and that do not know us. Everywhere that I go, if I walk with him, if I'm controlled by the Spirit, if I'm full of the Spirit, there's going to be fruit that's evident in our lives to those around us. Us, uh, that we are filled with the Holy Spirit uh, of God. Can you say amen tonight? The Apostle Paul said, be filled with the Spirit. Then he said in Galatians 5 and 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit uh, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The questions raised, what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? What does it mean to walk in the Spirit? First and foremost, it means to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. It's the opposite of being drunk on wine. A person that's drunk on wine or drunk on alcohol, uh, amen, they're under the influence of that alcohol. They don't have control of themselves. That's why when somebody's intoxicated, uh, that's why they do dumb things, uh, because they're controlled by that alcohol. They're not in control of what they're doing. Uh, when a person's drunk, uh, everybody can tell it. Uh, amen. You don't have to wonder. You see somebody drunk, uh, you don't have to go up and ask him, are you intoxicated? Uh, you can tell by the way they live. Uh, they can't hide it. Uh, when somebody's intoxicated uh, and controlled by alcohol, they're going to talk different. Their speech gets slurred. That's one of the things an officer looks for uh, when he goes up to the car with somebody that's drinking and driving. Uh, he listens to their speech. Their tongue gets thick, uh, amen, from the alcohol, uh, and they don't talk right. They talk different. Uh, somebody drunk walks different. Uh, that's why they make them do that line test and walk that line and hold their hands out put one foot in front of the other. Uh, a drunk doesn't walk right. They walk different. Uh, somebody that's drunk acts different. Uh, amen. And these actions make it obvious uh, to all of those around them. Well, the same is true spiritually of a Christian that's completely under the control of the Spirit of God. When we're under His control, we talk different. I said when we're under His control, we talk different. 
Amen. That's one of the reasons that when you get baptized with the Holy Ghost, uh, he takes control of your tongue because you and I can't control it ourselves. Brother, Brother Terry Bolin said one time he had a lady in his church he pastored. Uh, he said that lady had such a long gossiping tongue uh, she could sit in the house, sit on the front porch uh, and turn the stove off inside the house with her tongue uh, because it was so long. Uh, amen. Then the Holy Ghost takes control of us. Uh, amen. He gets control of that little member in our mouth. Uh, amen. He'll stop the gossiping. Uh, he'll stop all the chatter. Uh, he stops all the fault finding. Come on, sir amen to me tonight. Uh, he stops all of those things. Uh, when we get full of the Spirit of God, uh, we're going to talk different uh, than that sinner out there. Uh, we're going to walk different uh, than that world out there. Uh, that world staggering around, intoxicated uh, by the wickedness and the sin of this world. Uh, but that child of God, full of the Spirit of God, uh, they'll walk that straight and narrow path uh, that'll lead them to an eternity in heaven. Uh, get full of the spirit uh, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh those that are under the control of the spirit we act different we don't act like this world acts we don't do dumb things like this world does amen we're here we're representatives of God we're ambassadors of the Lord we're different in how we conduct our lives and our lifestyle uh, because the Spirit of God uh, fills us and controls us and leads us. Our actions and our words show beyond a, a shadow of a doubt uh, that we are full of the presence and the power of God. When you're full of the Spirit, it's going to be obvious to all of those around us uh, that we're controlled by the Spirit of God. The spirit-filled Christian will have control of their tongue and what they say. You're sure dead tonight. I said when a person's controlled by the spirit, amen, they're going to have control of that tongue. They, they're going to be careful in what they say. They're going to be careful in how they respond. They're going to be careful in how they answer. They're going to be careful what they say. One, one lady said, Sister Roxanne, I believe it was, uh, she said every one of us need a five-second delay on our mouths. Uh, amen. So that we think about what we're getting ready to say uh, and the damage it might do to somebody else. Uh, amen. The spirit-filled Christian will have control of their thoughts uh, and what they think. One preacher said, uh, amen, you can't control that bird flying over your head, uh, but you can control whether he builds a nest there or not. It's not a sin to have a bad thought. Uh, that devil will shoot that dart in your mind uh, and then accuse you of sinning against God. But we do have the power through the Spirit of God uh, when that dart comes, when that bad thought comes, uh, to shake that mess out of my head uh, and keep my mind on heavenly things. Come on now. Things that are pure, things that are righteous, uh, things that are holy. The Spirit-filled Christian will have control of their temper and how they act, how they react. One of the worst ways you can blow your testimony is with a bad temper. I know what that is. I had a short fuse before I got saved. I could get mad very quickly, and, I, and it took me a long time to get out from under that. But I'm glad when the Spirit of God filled me uh, to the full now, uh, if I feel that thing trying to rise up, uh, amen, I'll just walk off and leave it standing there. Uh, the Lord gives us self-control. Uh, we're able to bring our bodies under subjection. Uh, if you've got a bad temper and you're having problems with your temper, uh, what do I do, Brother Shelton? Uh, get in the altar uh, and pray until you're full of the Holy Ghost uh, and let God refill you again and again uh, and he'll bring that temper under control. Amen. The spirit-filled Christian will have control of their eyes and what they look at. Amen. God puts something in us that can cause us to turn our head the other way, to close our eyes off to things. Come on, say Amen. The spirit-filled Christian will have control of their ears and what they listen to. If you're full of the spirit, you're not going to let your ears be a garbage can for somebody else's mouth. Not going to let them pour that sewage into you. Come on now. 
You're not going to let that old bad music fill your ears. Uh, you're not going to let that gossip fill your ears. Uh, amen. Now those ears are controlled uh, by the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, you want to put good things in those ears uh, because those ears go into your mind. Uh, and what's in your mind gets down into your heart. Uh, amen. So the best thing to do uh, when they call them on a gossip, uh, hang the phone up on them. Uh, tell them you have to talk to somebody else about that. Uh, when they run you down out to service in the parking lot uh, and say did you see that uh, did you hear about this uh, amen you can leave them standing there uh, because you don't want to hear all that uh, you want to hear about heavenly things and godly things uh, and things that will grow you in him the spirit filled Christian will bear the fruit of the spirit Galatians 5 22 through 23 says but the fruit of the spirit is love and joy. Where's the joy in the church today? Christian people are some of the saddest people you're ever going to be around. I've seen sinners that's got more joy than some saints of God. But one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amplified says, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, uh, but how, to, how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. The reason we don't see the fruit of the Spirit evident in the church like we used to it's because people sitting on the pews are not filled with the Spirit. If we're not filled with the Spirit, uh, we're not going to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. If we're not filled with the Spirit uh, and we're not filled with the fruit of the Spirit, uh, we will be filled with the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Uh, amen. Just as sure as there's evidence uh, that I'm spirit-filled, uh, there's also evidence if I'm flesh-filled. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you also in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Amplified says it this way, Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. Paul said, I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things uh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. How do I stay away from the works of the flesh? Get full of the Spirit. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Get on fire for the Lord. We're all going to be full of something. Either the works of the flesh or the work of the Spirit. If you're going to go to heaven, if we're going to inherit the kingdom of God, get full of the Spirit and let there be evidence for this world to see day by day. Ephesians 5, 9 and 10 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. We're to be filled with the Spirit so that we can bear the right kind of fruit, so that we might inherit the kingdom of God. We're to be filled with the Spirit in order to be consistent in our daily walk. You know that we're, we're very at times we're very inconsistent in being consistent. We can't be up and down in this thing. I can't be red hot today and cold as ice tomorrow. 
I've got to be consistent daily in how I walk with God. I need to be consistent when I come to church and how I worship the Lord. I can't come in this service and get all beside myself and the next service act like I ain't never been in a church service a day in my life. We need consistency daily. I need to be consistent in how I love God, how I live for the Lord. You know, one of the greatest one of the greatest damages to the church uh, is not the drunkard in the ditch. Uh, it's not the drug addict or the prostitute. Uh, it's those who claim to be Christians uh, but live inconsistent lives uh, before the lost in that world. Hey Amen. This month I'm full of zeal. This month I can't wait to go to church. Uh, this month I'm in so in love with Jesus. Uh, let me tell you about Jesus. Uh, and next month uh, I don't want to talk about the Lord. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to read my Bible. Uh, hey Amen. Nobody will ever be one that way. I said nobody will ever be one uh, to the Lord by an inconsistent life. To be filled with the Spirit, uh, amen, causes us to be consistent uh, in our daily walk. The Spirit-filled Christian is a steady Christian. A Spirit-filled Christian walks the straight line. They don't walk the crooked line. They, they don't, they don't, you know, they're not blown to and fro. But they walk that straight line uh, as the Word of God shines the light upon our path. The spirit-filled Christian does not fluctuate uh, with the tides of the world. Uh, they're steadfast in their daily walk. Uh, let me tell you something here tonight. Uh, there's some of you that struggle with things that you don't have to struggle with. I said there's things that you struggle with uh, that you don't have to struggle with. Uh, it makes serving God not joyful. Uh, it makes serving God difficult. Uh, it causes that desire for the things of God uh, to wane and to wander away uh, because you're constantly in that battle uh, with those things that are not righteous and not pure uh, and not holy. Uh, how do I get beyond that, Brother Shelton? Uh, how do I get beyond that struggle uh, of just trying to do right, trying to do right, uh, but then getting knocked down again and again, uh, getting the altar uh, and stay in an altar. Uh, do it day by day. Uh, get full of the Spirit every single day. Uh, don't just do it in these altars tonight. Uh, tomorrow, find time uh, to get filled with the Spirit again. Uh, each and every day. Uh, if you're going to be consistent, uh, then you got to be consistently filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Those that are Spirit-filled, they're not in and out. They're not up and down all the time. I'm not preaching sinless perfection here. But I'm telling you, get filled with the Spirit of God uh, and you're going to lose your appetite for sin. Going to lose that taste for that. Let it go down and that flesh will rise up. And when that flesh rises up, then the battle comes then you're going to have to fight with that thing. But if you get full of God uh, and you stay full of God every day, uh, when sin tries to come, when temptation comes, uh, you can say no to the devil, uh, no to the world, no to the flesh, uh, and yes to God uh, consistently. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 4 and 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. The spirit-filled Christian, their faith is anchored in Christ and His Word. Now this is the day, and you'll agree with me here tonight, this is the day when, you know, there's a lot of confusion about what's right and what's wrong. You, you see people picking up things and doing things they didn't used to do anymore. Well, that's not something new for our day. People's always done that. There's always been a, a drift toward that world, a, a moving toward that world. Hey, man, the only guard, the only safeguard against that is to stay full of the Holy Ghost. You stay full of the Spirit of God. Amen. Once you get the taste of that wild honey in your, in your out there, it's hard to get that taste out of your mouth. So the best thing to do is just to continue to be a partaker at His table. And if you'll eat from His table every single day, you listen to me, if you'll eat from His table every single day, amen, you won't have a desire for that wild stuff out there in that world. You won't have a desire for the poison that's in the pot today. 
today. You want the pure, unadulterated word of a living God. You won't accept the compromise. You won't accept the lower standard. You won't accept anything that's worldly. You want to be holy. You want to be pure. You want to be righteous in everything that you do. Why? Because you've tasted him and you know that he is so good. Somebody raise up them hands and love him tonight. Hallelujah. You're the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. It's a challenge. It is a discipline that most people in our churches are not disciplined in. I know, listen, some of you tonight, and I love you. I'm your pastor. I'm your shepherd. I can, I can say this to you. I know there's some of you in this house tonight that are not in your head in agreement with me because you know what I'm telling you is true. But in your home, you don't practice that. In your home, you don't, you don't pray and seek God that way consistently, daily, getting refilled again and again and again. So I'm preaching tonight to help you with that, to encourage you to do that. You're going to need it to make it. I'm going to need it to make it. If I don't stay full of him, I, I'm telling you, friend, I'm not smarter than the devil, and you're not either. And I'm not stronger than that flesh unless I'm full of the Spirit of God. Listen, I can't say no to that flesh unless I'm filled uh, with the Spirit of God and controlled by the Spirit. Uh, then and only then can I say no to that flesh. Uh, then and only then can I say no to temptation. Uh, nobody's above temptation. Uh, Jesus himself, I had a man tell me one time, uh, you can live so close to God, you can't be tempted. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you, Jesus himself uh, was tempted in all points like we are, uh, yet without sin. Uh, if we stay full of his Spirit, uh, the temptation may come. But I can say no to it. I can walk off from it. I can leave it there. And I can go with Jesus Christ and make heaven my home. There's ever been a time that the church needs to be spirit filled. It is today. It is now. The enemy is so subtle, so deadly, and so dangerous that I'm not safe on my own. You're not safe on your own. I've got to have him. I've got to have him, his fullness in my life. That is, that is one of the greatest protections that we have against the things that come against the child of God. That is to be full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Spirit of God. Amen. Those that, those that are filled with the Spirit, their faith does not rise or fall with their emotions. You know, we're emotional people. That, that's normal. That's natural. For somebody to have no emotions at all, that's not normal. God gives us emotions. We can be filled with love. Uh, we can be upset at times. We can cry. We can be hurt. We can we feel all those uh, those range of emotions that that God gives us as human beings. Uh, but those who are full of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit of God uh, on a daily basis, uh, our faith does not rise or fall with my emotions uh, or the circumstances that I face. Uh, what I'm telling you is this: uh, when I'm on the mountaintop, uh, Amen. I'll still serve Him, uh, and when I go through the low, hard places that seem like uh, the sun never going to shine again. I, I don't have to let my faith wither away or dry up. I, I don't have to let my faith, I, you know, become weak in God. I, I can stay strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I, no matter where I'm having to walk, what I'm having to face, I, what I'm having to go through. I, I don't have to be an emotional Christian. I, what I mean by that is this, I, is that we walk by faith I, and not by our sight. I, sometimes it looks impossible. I, Sometimes it sounds impossible. Sometimes it seems too far gone. Sometimes it seems too dead. But my faith full of the Spirit says it's never too late for the Lord of glory. It's never too far gone with Him. It's never impossible with Him. And we trust Him. And God does it again and again. Hallelujah to God. Those filled with the Spirit they walk in the Spirit. They walk in truth. They walk in God's Word. They are steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work 
of the Lord. When we're being filled with the Holy Spirit, there will be sufficient evidence to convict us of it. Amen. Most Christians don't have enough in them for anybody to convict them. There's not enough evidence there to, to charge them with anything. Those that are being filled with the Spirit, there will be sufficient evidence to prove it because there will be constant fruit in our lives. The evidence is going to be seen in our daily walk with God and it's going to be seen in our daily walk with men. This thing works horizontal and vertical. It works upward with God in my relationship with Him, but it also works horizontally. It works outward with my relationship with people. It's going to be seen in our worship. We're not going to be inconsistent in our worship. Now, I want to say this to you before we come and pray tonight. Sister, come on and get ready. When we come to church to worship God, it should never be based on what song they sing. Long as they're singing, long as they're singing songs about Him, we ought to worship Him. It ought not to ever be what kind of message the preacher's preaching. We ought not to worship with one message more than we do the other. If it's the Word of God, we ought to worship with it every time we come to church. Nod your heads. Every time that we come to church, we ought to enter into His gates with thanksgiving. That cannot be based on my feelings or my emotions. Every time, no matter where I am, I've always got something to be thankful unto Him for. Amen. I ought to always enter into His gates with thanksgiving and then come on into His courts with praise. Listen to me. Some of you, I know we have different personalities. I understand that, but every Everybody can worship God in their own way and we ought to be consistent when we come to church and we ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm just telling you tonight, when you get filled with the spirit of God, amen, you can enter those gates with thanksgiving, come in those courts with praise. Doesn't matter if it's a Wednesday night and you're tired or a Sunday morning and you're excited or a Sunday night and you just don't know. Amen, the spirit of God helps us to be consistent uh, in our walk, uh, in our worship, uh, and in our witness uh, in this lost and dying world. Raise up your hands and love him. Consistency. The Spirit makes us consistent in our walk with God, our worship of God, and our witness to this lost world. I want people when they get around me to know I'm a Christian without me having to wear a t-shirt that says I'm a Christian. I don't have to go around bragging I'm a wholeness person. They're going to see evidence in my life I'm a wholeness person. I don't have to shout that from the housetops of the world. I'm holiness. I'm a wholeness person. No, sir. They'll see that in how I live my life every single day. They'll see that in how I can deck conduct myself and when I walk out of my house uh, and whoever sees me in that world when I'm in my home my family's around me uh, amen they're going to know that I'm a child of God they're going to know that I'm spirit filled uh, I don't have to wear a shirt that says hey I'm full of the spirit uh, there's going to be evidence uh, to charge me and convict me uh, and I can say I'm guilty as charged uh, amen the spirit causes us to be consistent uh, the spirit gives us the strength uh, the blood gets you to heaven uh, but we're not in heaven and yet we need the Holy Ghost baptism we need the fire to keep us while we're here in this world go into that eternal place being filled with the spirit is the beginning of a full life of Christian service this was the normal New Testament experience everybody in that early church seemingly was baptized with the Holy Ghost full of the spirit of God on fire for the Lord. In that upper room, about 120 people, every one of them got baptized with the Holy Ghost. We read again in the, in the New Testament there, again in the book of Acts, they were, they were filled again and again. Then the Apostle Paul said here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, keep on being filled with the Spirit. Keep on being filled with the Spirit. Today so few, few people possess this blessed fullness of the Spirit until many Christians classify it as something abnormal rather than usual. It ought to be the normal for the church today that we're all full of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. Everybody stand, please. 
God's Word gives us direction. God's Word gives us guidance when it comes to all spiritual matters. It shows us that this is a command of the Lord that we all be filled and keep on being filled with the Spirit of the Lord. This is my desire for this church. I don't want there to be a person in this church that attends this church that has not received this wonderful gift of God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that I don't wait till the next revival to, to just get refilled again. You know why revival doesn't tarry? You want to know why? Because if we do get refilled in that revival... We're not consistent being refilled over and over again day by day. If we do that, revival will tarry in the church. It'll tarry. That's why we have great revivals around here and we talk about how wonderful they were, but two weeks later a lot of folks are just right back in the same slump that we're, all, we're in before the revival meeting. But if we consistently, daily, keep on being filled with the Spirit, that revival spirit will be there. Oh, yeah. It'll be there. There's a cost to it, Sister Blanche. There's a price to pay. It's not easy to do that every day. There, the devil will distract you with a million things to keep you from being filled again. There's a difference in just praying and, and praying through. Praying through till he just pours out heaven upon you again. Most folks will pray. Some won't even do that consistently. But the ones that do pray daily, do we consistently pray until, until He fills us over and over again? My desire for this church is, you know, listen, I love to shout. I love all that. But my desire is for every child of God in this church be sanctified and keep on being sanctified and be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire day after day after day after day. Somebody told me I got baptized with the Holy Ghost two years ago. That's good. But what have you done today with God? Have you been filled again today? How many in this house? You don't have to raise your hands. How many has been refilled again and again since Sunday night, since Sunday church? Don't raise your hands. How many, how many on Monday you got filled again with the Holy Ghost? And Tuesday, yesterday, you got filled again with the Holy Ghost. And tonight you determine I'm going to get filled with the Holy Ghost to get around these orders. And if tomorrow comes, uh, I'm going to get refilled again. Uh, listen to me, friend. Uh, it, it, it costs time. It does. Uh, it's tiring to do that. But if you do it daily, uh, it's going to make us stronger in God. We're going to be closer to God. Uh, and God's going to show us things that we've never, the things we've only read about, but we desire to see. Uh, God will make the a reality in our lives and in the church today. God will do that. God will do that. Sister Shelton, you believe that. You believe what I'm preaching is true, Matthew. Brother Scott, you believe what I'm preaching is true. Sister Darlene, you believe it's the truth. Daily. Daily. Just as sure as I'm going to put food in my stomach. Because I know if I don't, I'm going to get weak. My body is going to get weak. If I don't get filled with the Spirit every day, my spirit man is going to get weak. And nobody can afford to go day after day after day and not be filled over and over and over again. These orders are open tonight for everybody to come. I don't want to, I know it's Wednesday night, and I know, I know we have work tomorrow. I understand all that. But I sure don't want to rush this thing in these orders tonight. If you haven't been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you need to pray till you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. And if you have been, you need to be refilled again tonight. And if you haven't been being refilled daily, we need to repent and ask the Lord to forgive us of that. What the Spirit says, what the 
You've prayed so long You need an answer from the Way. Yeah. 